Hey guys, welcome back to the Timothy Vogler Smithy. Today we're going to look at properties of forging. In the past, we've looked at pewter and brass casting using thermal energy, taking that thermal energy, liquefying those materials, and then casting that into shape into a mold. Today, we're going to forge. In forging iron, we're adding thermal energy from our fire. That thermal energy is absorbed into the iron. That way we can then use pressure and shape it to its form. As we work today, we're going to use all three states of matter, solids, liquids, and gases. So as we work, see if you can find examples of all three. Timothy, as most tradesmen, received his knowledge through the training system called an apprenticeship. As a part of his training, he was to learn the blacksmith's trade. A blacksmith used black iron, the color of iron, after it was retrieved from the fire. The term smith comes from the English term smite, which means to strike with a firm blow. As a part of Timothy's apprenticeship, he would have forged iron. The forging of iron is at the heart of the blacksmith's trade. Forging involves applying pressure to shape the metal to form. By applying force in the correct areas, we can change that metal shape. The iron absorbs heat through the fire through thermal conductivity. This allows the iron molecules or particles freer movement, allowing them to change shape easier. Today we're in the process of hot forging. That involves the use of a fire, a hammer and anvil to apply pressure, but the most important of these tools is our bellows. Our bellows is up in our gable area of the shop. It's six foot tall, so taller than I am, four feet wide. When it's fully filled, it comes up to my waist, it's four foot tall. Our bellows upstairs will give you 20 to 30 seconds worth of air. This bellow gives you about one second. So we're filling our bellows right now. And that's full at this point. So this is one continual blow of air. So what makes metals a metal? Scientists define metals using many different properties or characteristics. One of these is a high melting point. The iron that we've used today in our forging exceeds 2500 degrees Fahrenheit. Other characteristics that help define metals are luster, the ability for that material to reflect light. The anvil that has been polished shows luster in that iron. Corrosion is the natural process that converts metal into a more stable form, such as an oxide or hydroxide. It is a destructive chemical reaction. Another characteristic is magnetism. This is the ability of that material to be attracted to a magnet. High density is another characteristic. This means that the particles that make up the material are packed tightly together. Metals also have conductibility with both heat and electric charge. When you turn on the lights in your house, the electricity is transferred or conducted through the metal wires. Conductibility with heat can be further defined as ductility or malleability. Ductility is the ability of that metal to be drawn or stretched. So this small piece of copper is so ductile, it can be stretched into a wire this long. When iron is heated to a high temperature, it becomes far more ductile. The forging process can be seen by drawing that material in its length. Another forging process is termed as malleability. Malleability is a metal's ability to be forced into a flat sheet. Just as we saw in the iron's ductility, it also has characteristics of malleability. However, iron is far less malleable than it is ductile.
Both malleability and ductility play a major part in how a smith shapes his work. The next time you touch a piece of metal, in the doorknob, in a pot, in a tool, think about how it might have been shaped or formed. Does it show malleable properties, ductile properties? Is it attracted to a magnet? Does it show forms of corrosion? All these characteristics help us determine what metals are used for what purpose in your daily life.